I get a lot of questions about the pneumatic brake. So uh, until now, I, this has been a proprietary thing. I have posted photos of the completed assembly like this, but never the internals. So this is probably the most machined part on the whole intern fourth axis. Pretty complicated piece, although it's, it's two and a half feet. It's not, not a complicated program. Uh, inside of here is a lever. And this is a thing. If you look in the specs, you'll see it says articulated caliper. Now, articulated is just a fancy way to say it's got levers and, and it's not direct acting. So this uh, air cylinder with a, has a, put a stud in it so that you're not pushing on an open. This goes here and it acts on this lever. So this lever then pushes up, and you see that there's a little bump in the middle? So that pushes this puck, and it pushes it up from the middle, so now it can rock back and forth, which is what we want, because we want it to be able to find its own center on that disc rotor. Here's the disc rotor here. If this thing is free to rock back and forth, we're pushing it from the middle, it's gonna, it's gonna lay itself flat against that disc surface. We try to push on one side or the other, then we're going to wind up having it cocked, and we're going to get this much friction space instead of the entire pad. Here, these actually are uh, racing pads for quads. So they're they're made to go through the mud and the muck and have all kinds of junk all over. Uh, and uh, this is the pair of them. This one has to float in here because it has to move. The whole purpose of this uh, this is a spindle lock, not a brake. And the difference is, an automotive brake, for example, the parts that have to move, which is actually the entire caliper, they ride back and forth on pins. And the pins have rubber boots and there's grease inside of there so that this, the caliper can move along so that as the pads wear, it can adjust itself and it can make sure that it grabs onto the rotor equally on both sides and doesn't just try to flex the rotor over by pushing it on one side only. But uh, why is that not good for this application? Well. You have two pins, uh, and this is going to slide on the pins, then by definition you have to have clearance. And clearance means that uh, this rotor, or this caliper, is going to be able to click back and forth like this on those two pins. And even though that's a tiny amount, it's more than we want to tolerate, and we're trying to lock uh, a spindle at an exact as The other pad, on the other hand, the stationary pad, does not have to move, so it's actually epoxied on. So this is epoxy to this back plate cannot move. So we take this now and we put this together. We have a couple of springs that go on. These are stainless steel pins. And those springs is what retracts this pad so that it doesn't drag on the disc. Rather than rely on the pad to be able to push this cylinder back, we use dual acting cylinders, which means there's, a, there's an air port to, to, to apply this, and then there's an air port to retract it. So there's these little springs here all they have to do is push that puck off of the rotor. They don't have to try to re retract the cylinder. So this goes together, something like this. And that gap that's left right there is for the, is for the uh, flex plate and the flex plate reinforcement. So, all right, what are those? And there's a the reinforcement. The reinforcement is simply, big. this is 7075 T7, very, very stiff, very hard. Uh, but it does work hard, and so if you if you flex this too much in the same place, eventually it'll crack. So if you put the reinforcement on there, it distributes the flex and prevents it from flexing too much in one spot. Uh, the same idea as uh, leaf springs on the back of your truck or you know some performance cars, and you have a wider leaf and then progressively smaller leaves until you get to the axle, and that's it spreads that flexing out. But uh, the purpose of a flex plate is that this bolts in here tight. And it is mounted tight on these. The reason it has to flex is so that uh, as these pads wear, the caliper is going to want to be in a different position. We also want to guarantee that the caliper can move enough to grab onto this rotor. The rotor goes, of course, there's a rotor clearance. There's this part that's cut in here. So that's where the rotor runs, just like that. This rotor, incidentally, is a hardened steel, blanched ground. This is also a rotor for uh, a quad. It's a racing rotor. Because they actually, people are insane enough to race those things. So this goes together. Flex plate goes on here like this. Once it's bolted together, you have an assembly that looks something like this, except that there's no springs in here yet. Uh, and then once this flex plate is bolted onto the mount, 
this uh, and this uh, rear pad is, bond, is epoxy bonded onto this. So this thing had absolutely no radial movement at all. It cannot move radially. So once that locks onto the rotor, that rotor is fixed at that azimuth. And, this, and these are, are actually um, designed such that when they grab the rotor, they don't move it. They just come straight across and hit the rotor. So this flex plate is kind of the secret weapon to making this an absolute accurate and absolute positive uh, spindle lock. Once it has a hold of that thing, it, well, it, it, it flexes, but it can't, can't move radially this way because it's, it's a hard connection. No pins to float on. So that's pretty much the, the big secret to these um, articulated pneumatic calipers. And uh, these guys will, will generate 100 foot pounds of torque at 90 psi. And the cylinders are rated way higher than that, so there's a lot of reserve if you need more than 100 foot pounds of holding torque. And so far, to my knowledge, no one's ever needed more than 100 foot pounds of holding torque. Uh, with that much torque, you can you can uh, you can drill holes in stainless two and three and four inches off center, and it still holds it doesn't move at all. So very very good, powerful lock. It kind of evolved over time. It didn't start out like this. It evolved. To this. There's a video with this ancient uh, mechanical running off a little air cylinder and um, had aluminum rotor. So it worked for the tiny uh, fourth axis that I was building at that time. But when you get up into these big boys, that is wholly inadequate, and you can't use a um, aluminum rotor as a brake. You can only use it as a lock. If you try to grab that thing while it's, while it's moving, it's just going to pick up the surface and make a huge mess.